Let's look at Next.js Suspense and the loading UI, how that works, because I think this is probably one of the things that I really, really love about Next.js. It handles this automatically for you. And I got to say, when I kind of figured this out, I was kind of doing things like the old React way, um, kind of having UI be there, be returned if like the state wasn't what I expected it to be. But this makes things so much easier. And so I figured we'd kind of go through this a little bit. Uh, so let's check it out. I have this really basic application right here. There's a little button which actually doesn't What's well, a link actually technically. And so it'll go to like this page, this posts page. Um, and essentially all that's gonna do is just make a request to some like dummy JSON API endpoint that I found online that just brings back a list of like 20, roughly 20 or so posts. So nothing too crazy. We're not really doing anything all that significant. And if I go and refresh this and then I hit posts, watch really quickly up here in the corner there, in the upper left corner, you're gonna see loading and then boom, you're gonna see all of my posts. And there's like, there's actually way more than 20 here, I think. There's probably maybe 50, I would say, I would guess. So how did we do that though? Because in my code, not there, here, you might be used to seeing something more along the lines of this in React, perhaps that's at one point how I learned how to do things. But in Next.js, we can just have the uh, this here, this loading thing, this loading component, right? And if we just place this, this is a special file that Next.js is going to look for loading dot in my case, TSX, because I'm using TypeScript, but it could be JSX for you if you're using just JavaScript. And so if you put that basically, what will happen is that Next.js will look for the closest loading JS or TSX file, and it will use that. But how does this actually work? Like what's going on here, right? Let's take a look at that. So we've added this header here, right? And you can see it just says create next app. You can kind of see it over here generated by create next app. Okay, fine. Let's refresh that. Now this time around, note that the loading will be underneath. So what's gonna happen is you'll see this H1 in this paragraph content, what's in those tags. And then you'll see the loading right underneath that. And then in like a split second, then you'll see the children, which in this case are the posts, get uh, get generated or get, get populated rather. So let's take a look here, watch and see. You saw it right there, right? Do that again, check that out. Let's do that real quick, we'll do it one more time. All right, you saw it there. If you didn't see it, go back and watch it again. But Basically, what happens is that we're using, it, it kind of like creates these segments inside of our page. And so it basically will deliver content immediately that can be delivered. And then while the rest of the content is loading, it will just show the loading, the loading screen, essentially that, that loading component that we created, which in our case is just, you know, loading dot, 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 but it could be a progress wheel. It could be a progress bar. It could be a skeleton, whatever it is that you want, really. It could be an image actually, if you really wanted to, an image of, of your face, for example. Um, but, but either way, uh, this allows us to kind of deliver something to the browser, to the client, immediately for the people to see until our actual data has finished its processing and fetching and is delivered to the, con to the browser. And then it will just automatically replace that for us. So it kind of makes this a lot easier to work with loading states, right? Okay, so... So this is really cool. It's super helpful, obviously. Hopefully you can see how this would be really beneficial to us. Um, but what happens when we have maybe multiple requests? In server-side server -side rendered uh, applications, what happens is there's kind of like this order of operations before anything is actually able to be given to the user or given to the browser, which is then some extra stuff happens and then ultimately given to the user for them to actually be able to use the application. So how does that work? And how can we actually improve this here? So first let's understand what the steps are that actually we go through in order to get from the point of like a page is requested to the user can actually use an interactive application, the one that we intend them to actually be able to use. 
The first step is that all of the data that is needing to be fetched for this page needs to be fetched in the server. Step two is that the server will then render all of the HTML that is gonna be sent to the browser. Step three is that the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript, they're actually sent to the browser. Step four is that with that generated HTML that was sent, it will basically create this non-interactive UI that is displayed on the screen. Finally, in step five, React will actually what's called hydrate the UI, which means that it's then has everything that it needs to have, and it can then be used by the user. And this can take this can take time, right? So how can we actually get around this and improve that user experience so they don't really have to deal with it, or at least so they they the perceived time that it takes to actually render the application and make it usable for them is a lot less than maybe it otherwise would be. So what we can do is we can use this thing called streaming, which basically allows us to kind of break down our page into chunks, oftentimes basically by React components. And it will then kind of send things over in chunks or by component in this case, as they're ready, which is great because it allows us to kind of give this illusion as though things are happening a lot faster because everything can kind of happen in its own stream, its like own work stream. It's important to note though that all of these steps are actually still happening in the same order. The difference is that we're doing things on a per component basis, not all at once before anything gets there. Okay, so check this out. So what I've done here is I've gotten rid of our slash post endpoint or slash post route. And now we just have everything happening on the homepage. So we have moved our header to be on the homepage. We've also added this thing here called suspense. And the other thing that I've done, and actually we can even just flat out delete this post and it should still do the same thing. The other thing that I've done is I've changed the name of our loading.tsx file to be testloading.tsx. And I've changed that component to be called just test loading. And the reason that I did this is because the loading.tsx, again, is something that Next.js will actually look for and automatically handle it for us. But in this case, I'm trying to demonstrate that we can just manually do it ourselves as well if we really wanted to. Um, or in some cases, you might have to if you want things to be done on a React component basis instead of a page level basis, right? So we have this, it basically does the same thing. And actually, Garrett said, we're, let's even change it so that we can really see that it's different. So Garrett says, said it's loading. Fantastic. All right, cool. Now, uh, here, we just have basically the same thing that we had before we have our our posts and make the request. The only difference is that this is no longer inside of slash page or post. It's now just on the homepage, right? And then let's go to our layout. This is that main thing I have added here, this suspense component that uh, that react actually makes available for us. So if we were to comment that out, and go and do this again, you'll notice that there's no longer look over here, there's no longer a loading message that's coming up. And that makes sense because we removed it. We told Next.js, hey, don't do this for us again anymore, right? We're, well, we, don't, we didn't actually say we're gonna do it now. I mean, we have that part commented out, the fact that we're saying we're gonna do it. We just said, hey, like, don't do this at all, right? But if I go to add this back, this suspense thing, watch again really, really quick in the top left, you can see for a split second there, it says, Garrett said it's loading. And so we can see that this works. We're able to do it ourselves if we really want to. And you can do this with, you know, the, whatever number of components you need to, uh, to make your user experience the best that it can be for your users. Now, something that you might be wondering is how does this actually affect SEO? Uh, something that's really important. This is one of the main benefits of, or one of the, not about main benefits, but it's one of the the commonly or often thrown out benefits of server-side rendering is SEO because everything happens on the server. And so by the time you get to the browser, it's already there. And a, you know, a, a search engine crawler like Google would be able to pick everything up and kind of make sense of it really easily. To that end, Next.js is going to wait for generate metadata to already be any of the fetching to kind of already be done. And so it's going to always make sure that there is a head tag that gets to the browser, which is great for SEO. And then the other thing is status codes. So as far as status codes go, 
Uh, Next.js will return a 200 status code because technically it's getting to you correctly. Like the page is actually getting to the browser successfully. But however, there are other requests happening, don't forget. And so when those finish, if those do have errors in them, it will return those errors as well. So you can still get the errors um, and there are ways to handle them. And I'll make another video talking about how you would handle those errors. But as far as this goes, you will get an immediate, well, not immediate, you will get a an initial 200 status code because uh, you know stuff is getting to the browser successfully. Subsequent requests can still return you know, other error codes that are non 200. So anyway, uh, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Peace.